Uh, hello, uh, this is my design project presentation um, and I am going to be using the findings from uh, the research study implanted user interfaces, which you can see is cited here. As for my product, uh, I have thought of developing an artificial retina display device. This bodily implanted lens sends information to a chip that has been surgically implanted in the retina. This allows the lens to display anything you want on your retina. Such devices always stay with the user, making their implanted user interfaces available at all times. This lens can be utilized by anyone and can be used for so many things. You don't need to carry around a phone or any other device uh, that can display. You can use it for daily interactions like communicating with people, or just for entertainment, like watching Netflix. Such devices always stay with the user, making their implanted user interfaces available at all times. This product can possibly even get blind people to see again. Implanting devices that possess user interfaces would allow users to directly interacting with them, allowing them to support a wide range of applications and tasks beyond uh, the medical usage prevalent today. So my question is, how important is usability for this kind of product and what specific qualities of that user interface would need to be high functioning to get people to overcome this comfort? This eye lens, for example, must have a high battery life so that you won't have to constantly charge it. People can not take it in and out all the time as this will not overcome discomfort. To make it useful, what is the best way of implementing it without discomfort? How can individual qualities improve the discomfort that users might feel? How does this relate to the research study called Implanted User Interfaces? Well, this research study is about bodily implants under the skin that share a lot of the same problems that an artificial retina display might have. So what specific qualities of the product have to be high functional for people to overcome any sort of discomfort with it? How to remain powered is one of the main points in this research study and it's essential for people to over overcome any sort of discomfort. And also, they discuss if it can be charged externally, or must one do surgery every time it needs more power? Is it harmful to the eye or the skin, as in this research study where they do around the skin? Since implanted devices sit on your skin, they are not directly accessible, uh, accessible through their interfaces. This makes providing input to them an interesting challenge, since the first Part of the research study focus on a technical ev evaluation. I'm going to have my main focus on the social evaluation part of the study to fit in the field of social informatics. So, the purpose and hypothesis of the study. Before implanted user faces can become a reality, a lot of questions has, uh, must be considered. In this paper, they discuss four core challenges. How can users provide input, produce input? How can the devices provide output? How can the devices communicate and transfer information? And how can the devices remain powered? They then demonstrate how to deploy a prototype device on a participant using artificial skin to uh, simulate an implantation and close with a discussion of medical considerations of implanted user interfaces, risks and limitations and project into the future. So, for the major findings of the study, uh, start off with the technical evaluation. The results of this uh, part of the study shows that traditional user interfaces for input, output, wireless communication, and powering function, when embedded in, this, in the tissue of the forearm, uh, works. Um, so, having obtained an evaluation of uh, common components establishes the foundation for future investigation into more like complex devices to explore the many other aspects of implanted user interfaces. Further study is needed to determine if gender, skin color, and side of implementation affect, uh, affect device function. 
These are all things that could affect the quality of the device and must be of high enough quality so that people can co over overcome any discomfort with it. And the implants, of course, come with medical risks, the main one being infection from the various devices when implementing them. They could not really tear through the skin. Um, skin is very strong, and it is unlikely that small devices like that could cause any damage. But determining the long-term effects of the interaction, interactions with implanted devices on skin requires a lot more studying. For the qualitative part of the research study, participants found uh, their implemented uh, devices to be really easy to use. Everyone liked the tap and sensor button. No one liked the pressure sensor. For the outputs, everyone uh, ranked LED the lowest uh, for perception. And people liked the speaker and the vib vibration motor best. Um, these findings show us that bodily implanted user faces do work and problems uh, people have when interacting with them. This can be important for the development of my own product. So, how did the authors test their hypotheses? They see four core challenges uh, associated with implanted user interfaces and they're used to, uh, through human skin. One, providing input to and sensing input to uh, implanted devices. Um, two, perceiving output from and producing output from implanted devices. Three, communicating among uh, implanted devices and with external devices. And four, power supply to implanted devices. Uh, these are challenges that would reflect itself in the artificial islands that I wanna make. And these four challenges, uh, challenges uh, were then tested using seven different devices that were fully encompassed under the skin. These seven devices were the touch input device, hover input device, output device, audio device, speaker and microphone, uh, powering device, uh, and a wireless communication device. Uh, after evaluating each of the seven different devices, every one of them, uh, all to, every one of them worked and all traditional user interfacing components um, that were implanted worked under the skin, sensing input through the skin, emitting output that could be perceived through the skin and charging and communicating wirelessly. This is essential and useful for the artificial retina display lens in the sense that they seem to have I figured out how the specific qualities of the user interface uh, have to be high enough so that people can overcome any sort of discomfort. Uh, for the qualitative part of the study, to, they, they wanted to explore initial user feedback on implanted user uh, interfaces. So they built and deployed a sort of prototype device that was covered with a layer of artificial skin on the users. And their goal uh, was to gain initial insight on how users may feel about walking around with an interactive implanted device and to demonstrate how such devices can be prototyped and tested outside controlled lab conditions. Through this mythology, um, they can see how people might feel about uh, walking around with bodily implants and if there's any discomfort with it, they know what to do. Uh, in the future. So, are the results likely to be reliable and accurate? Um, the authors are from Autodesk Research, uh, Toronto, Ontario. The research study was in the ACM portal at the Rutgers Libraries and has been peer reviewed. So it's safe to say that it's reliable and accurate uh, because this is a reputable scholarly journal uh, that has good credibility in this subject. Um, having obtained an evaluation of common components uh, establishes the foundation for future investigations into more complex devices to explore all of the other impacts of implanted user interfaces. One limitation to this research study is that they were completely disregarded uh, security concerns. 
uh, wireless implanted devices need to prevent such like malicious activities and people that uh, and interactions from users other than the host uh, user itself, such as stealing or altering stored information and manipulating the device's operating system. More work is definitely necessary to investigate if and how implanted devices can perform more uh, computationally uh, intensive operations, classification tasks uh, using machine learning and how this affects the need for power supply. Um, also, the qualitative uh, part of the study uh, was made in the summer, while in the winter, cloth will additionally cover uh, implanted out input and output components and interfere with the interaction of it, which raises new challenges. Overall, the results are reliable and accurate, using uh, empirical research to improve future work and discussion when it comes to bodily implanted user interfaces. Uh, so how does this fit in with Kling's idea? Um, I quote from Kling, uh, social informatic researchers are especially uh, interested in developing reliable knowledge about information technology and social change based on systematic empirical research to inform both public policy debates and professional practice. As I said, the research study was published in ACM portal uh, at Rutgers um, and uh, they're known for empirical research and credibility in the subject. In this research study, they're using their reliable knowledge about information technology and social change to help improve the interaction between bodily implanted user interfaces and the user, which can then help future work and discussion in both professional practices and public policy debates. What has been found and discussed in this uh, research study uh, they especially say how implanted user interfaces could become a reality in the future. You've seen both the technical evaluation and in the social evaluation just how they use empirical research that can help improve future work and discussion when it comes to bodily implanted interfaces. The social researchers' work is something that I could also use for future work and discussion, developing an artificial retina display lens.